Despite its ironic name, Hurricane Melissa has been wreaking havoc across the Caribbean these past few days and is on a direct course straight for Jamaica. But what some don't know is that it's projected to apparently be the worst hurricane that Jamaica has ever received. This is because it's listed as a category 5 and even the hurricanes of legend like Ivan and Gilbert have never reached that far. But what exactly is a category 5 hurricane? Well, to explain this, we first need to understand that the entire reason hurricanes exist is because of the sunlight. The reason a hurricane season starts during the summer is because hurricanes form when the sun is shining on the ocean. When it shines too hot and the water starts to evaporate, eventually it rises up into the sky and forms clouds. However, if this keeps happening with a lot of water at an extreme rate, that's a lot of clouds to keep in one place. On top of this, the warm air that's rising to form these clouds clouds is quickly being replaced by new air down below. And the faster this happens is how we get wind speeds. Add in the fact that the earth is always spinning and you have an insane amount of clouds in one place with fast paced wind spinning in a circle. And this phenomenon is what you call the level zero stage of a hurricane, a tropical depression. These are typically not that dangerous with winds of only 39 miles per hour. And the main risk being heavy rain and potential flooding in weak areas. But generally speaking, you don't hear about them that much because they aren't really that flashy. However, they're still important to monitor because if if a tropical depression keeps feeding on more and more warm water, it will eventually rise into level 0.5, which is a storm. We've all seen storms, and we talk about them because these typically go up to around 75 miles per hour and are characterized by lots of lightning and thunder. Not only do we pay attention to these because of how loud they are, but also because this is where damage can start to occur. Tree branches can be affected, power lines can potentially be knocked down, and this is where these monsters are typically given a name, which by the way are literally just a list of random predetermined names made by the World Meteorological Organization in alphabetical order that alternate back and forth between male and female names every hurricane. So the name has nothing to do with its severity. But if you thought storms were intimidating, that's nowhere close to if they were to evolve into a category 1, the weakest stage of what we can now officially describe as a hurricane. At this stage, winds go up to 95 miles per hour and if you have anything in your backyard that's not properly secured, it may probably be moved. Some trees may be damaged and your light is probably going away, but depending on where you live, you may get it back soon after the hurricane is done. It's not a full blown disaster yet and if you prepare properly and wait it out, it should pass eventually. But it's enough to make everybody prepare and stay on their toes. Simple preparations may not be enough for the next one though, because when it comes to category 2s, this is a whole different ball game. At this stage, winds can go up to 110 miles per hour, which means that it's literally strong enough to start lifting roofs and snapping branches, even uprooting trees that are not properly fastened. Roads can be blocked by falling debris, and this time, you definitely will not have light. Flooding can also become a major issue for areas close to the sea. And if you live in the hills, well, just know those landslides are nothing to joke about. A category 2 hurricane is no longer just a threat, it's a promise. And it will not be forgiving to those who don't take it seriously. However, this is the part where we can say that we have essentially just described a stereotypical hurricane. Something we've probably all seen at some point in our lives. However, the next one on the list is territory so dark that our parents never fail to remind us of the horrors. Category 3, the level of Hurricane Ivan. It was 2004 and after many fears and warnings, a brand new hurricane had hit the island, but nobody could have imagined that it would have been this bad. Despite the fact that Ivan didn't even technically reach Jamaica because at the last minute it turned away, it still absolutely decimated the country, causing massive floods, tossing trees like basketballs and ripping roofs off houses like they were never there. In the short time it took to wreak havoc on the country, it claimed the lives of 18 Jamaicans, including the body of 24 year old Orito Lawrence in Kingston who was found floating in a flood. 35 year old Sonia Hayden who was crushed to death after a random guinea tree was uprooted and fell on her house at 9.30 in the night. 37 year old Carmen Clark who was killed after her house suddenly collapsed on her during a land slippage. And the craziest one that I saw was an entire family of four including 44 year old Donald Carnegie along with his three children who he lived with in Stony Hill who were all instantly killed because while he was preparing food on the stove, the insane winds obliterated their house with nothing more than mud and random debris. 
literal mud. Alongside those who lost their lives, another 18,000 people were tragically left homeless. This is because category 3 hurricanes go up to 129 miles per hour, which is literally the equivalent of skating down the toll at 200. And if you didn't have the absolute best infrastructure, you unfortunately did not stand much of a chance. And after everything I just said, it's genuinely difficult to believe it gets worse. Because what could possibly be worse than this? But there are still two levels left and there's another hurricane that even our grandparents view as the worst event to ever happen in their lifetime. None other than the category 4 behemoth Hurricane Gilbert, otherwise known as the worst hurricane Jamaica has ever seen. If category 3 was like the worst version of a typical hurricane, category 4s are like if the devil himself came onto earth and was allowed to wreak havoc. And nobody felt this more than those who were present on the day of September 12, 1988, the day it made landfall. The sky was black, with winds tearing through the air as if it were gunfire. Power lines are dancing in the air, and any electrical wires that are still live are most likely broken and snapping, electrifying any water that they touch, which would mean almost certain death for anyone who comes in contact. All this while trees are being lifted from the ground as if they're nothing but twigs in the dirt. If you didn't have a proper home in Jamaica at this point, you were done. But even if you had a proper home, you were still done. Because no matter how much preparation was done beforehand, against winds of 156 miles per hour, the country literally had no chance. And in just a few days, 49 Jamaicans came to the end of their lives. But what's even crazier is that over 500,000 people were left completely homeless. And the country's entire banana industry, which we heavily relied on for money at the time, was almost completely wiped out. The concept of not having light or water did not matter because you literally would not have had a house to use them in. And regardless, the power lines and telephones were of course destroyed to the point of being unrecognizable. So imagine being stuck and unable to even call for help. Due to this, even after the hurricane subsides, light and water can take months to be restored to certain places and the country itself suffers significant long-term damage. A category 4 hurricane surpasses that of a natural disaster and becomes a national emergency. And while in comparison to the population, only 49 people may have died, many more lost everything that they had. So with all of this being said, knowing full well that despite everything you've seen thus far, we still somehow have one more level on the list, we have to ask ourselves, what could possibly on this earth be worse than that? Destroyed homes, destroyed infrastructure, black skies with no communication, the destruction of food, and trees floating like something out of a nightmare crashing into people's houses and killing them. Haven't we seen it all? Well, that's just the problem. We haven't seen it all. Never in the history of this island have we ever experienced a category 5 hurricane. In fact, if we're being technical, Gilbert was barely a category 4 and is mostly listed as a high-end category 3. Therefore, most of us have absolutely no clue what this truly means. And this may be hard to believe, but based on the research we've done and what we've seen happen to other countries, let me paint a picture of what category 5s can entail and pray with every fiber of my being that it does not come to pass. We said that a category 4 was like if the devil himself came to earth and was allowed to wreak havoc. But there's only one thing worse than that. Imagine if not the devil, but God himself decided that this world was too far gone and he didn't want it to exist anymore. That would be a category 5. At this stage, absolutely nothing is safe. Evacuation is the only option. Because if you get hit directly, chances are your home is gone. Your car is also gone. Windows shatter instantly, sending glass shards flying through the air. And any structures or buildings that are poorly anchored are absolutely obliterated and reduced to nothing but rubble. Trees are uprooted like mere toothpicks and snapped in half, leading the streets to be filled with their debris and thus completely blocked, making travel impossible. Vehicles are either completely flipped over, crushed by debris, or swept away in the floods as if they were nothing but toys. And if a 5,000 pound 
car is getting this treatment, if a human were to step foot into the open, well, it's not rocket science what would happen to him. Anywhere close to the sea will almost definitely be flooded, with boats being pulled back to shore and smashed against the docks, and beachfront houses being completely swept away. And for those on land who think they're safe, rivers are overflowing, causing flash floods that sweep away everything in their path, including homes, livestock, crops, and even the roads themselves. Of course, if the trees don't stand a chance, you already know agriculture is decimated. And with the loss of bananas, sugarcane, vegetables and livestock, food supplies are in ruins. The destruction is so thorough to whatever country becomes its victim that recovery can take not weeks but sometimes years. Because even after the hurricane passes, the aftermath is absolutely terrifying, with debris filling the streets, collapsed buildings and destroyed infrastructure that turns once vibrant areas into ghost towns. A heartbreaking example of this was Hurricane Dorian which hit the Bahamas in 2019 and completely leveled everything in its path. leaving over 70 people confirmed dead. However, that number is just the confirmation. Because Hurricane Dorian actually left an additional 282 people still missing to this day. And I think at this point, we know what happened to them. Which would make for over 350 bodies. And keep in mind, their population is far less than ours with a mere 400,000 residents. If you were to multiply that by 6.5 to reach Jamaica's 2.8 million. That is a number so astounding, I don't even feel comfortable reading it out in this video. But just know, it's over 45 times higher than the death toll of Gilbert, the worst hurricane we have had. Granted, perhaps we can say that the population is more dense in Bahamas or come up with other factors as to why the number could be so high. But regardless of the specifics, it's clear that the threat is orders of magnitude higher than anything we've ever seen before. And this may make you wonder, if it's really this bad, what can I even do to protect myself? Well, here's the thing. There is one saving grace of all this. Technically, all of what we just described is only the worst case scenario. It's still very possible that wherever you live will not end up on the direct path of the hurricane. In fact, the hurricane has not technically even reached Jamaica yet, which means that there is still hope. On top of this, our infrastructure is far better than it was 40 years ago. However, we cannot rely on hope alone, because these predictions seem very sure that Melissa will make landfall, and when it does, as a category 5. Because of this, I cannot guarantee that any of us will be safe. However, this is where we stop letting the TikTok memes cloud our perception and realize that taking this seriously is the difference between life and death. As devastating as it is to see your property be damaged and your hard earned money go down the drain, a fate I wouldn't wish on anyone, we need to all collectively acknowledge that our own personal safety and our lives are the most important thing. Regardless of what that means for you, look after yourselves, look after each other, don't be reckless and most of all, don't lose hope. We eventually came back from Gilbert and Ivan and although it wasn't easy, it was done. All we can do is pray for a miracle and continue to make the best possible preparations we can. Because if it's one thing you should have learned today, this thing is no joke. I mean it. And anyhow no no wanna drop out before I upload my next video, may I find you and conk in your head. Eh, make sure. But anyways, keep on yourself safe. And as always, the dance hall has been decoded.